If you see the word cognate in the context of biology, think recognize or correct, because just like you might recognize your best friend, a molecule will recognize its correct or its like usual, its favorite binding partners. And this is going to be its cognate interaction partner. So for example, if you have a receptor, so a molecule that kind of like sticks out of a protein surface and can, set, can keep track of what's going on outside, it's going to have a cognate ligand, so a binding partner that normally binds to it and then causes things to happen. Another place you'll probably see the word cognate and where you see it used very frequently is in the context of translation, which is the process of making a protein by piecing together its individual amino acids, so its building blocks. How this works is that there's this protein-making complex called the ribosome that travels along the messenger RNA, so the recipe copy for making that protein. And the order of amino acids to be added is specified in the sequence of that messenger RNA in the form of codons, which are these three-letter kind of like words or chunks. And so the ribosome is going to travel along codon by codon, and what's going to be happening is that the cognate tRNA, so the tRNA with the corresponding or the correct amino acid is going to bring it to the ribosome to be added. Now, the ribosome is going to need to know whether or not this is actually the cognate tRNA or whether it's some other tRNA. Because these molecules are kind of just like floating about and there's lots of all of these and they can kind of just come and transiently bind and then unbind, but in the case where you have the cognate match, so there's a match between the messenger RNA and that anticodon, they have this complementary base pairing interaction. Now this interaction is going to be stable enough that's going to stabilize the interaction between the tRNA and the messenger RNA in this ribosome. It's going to kind of cause the ribosome to shape shift a little conformational change, trigger the hydrolysis or the sort of breaking of GTP by one of these elongation factors, which is then going to unbind and kind of get things to shift over in the ribosome and hold this in there more, more permanently. But all of that is, inter in, is relying on you having this interaction between the cognate tRNA and its, amino, and its messenger RNA codon. Now, if they're perfect matches, then that's great. You have this cognate match and all goes according to plan. You have this stable binding, you get this conformational change, you get the hydrolysis, everything gets shifted over, all's good. But what if something goes in there that isn't supposed to be there, a non-cognate tRNA? Well, now the interactions aren't strong enough for things to hold. You don't get that um, sort of stabilizing interaction and that shape change in the ribosome. So it's not just that codon, anti-codon interaction. You also have interactions with the RNA of the ribosome itself because the ribosome itself is actually largely made up of RNA. And this can actually interact with the tRNA as well, especially thanks to things like RNA modifications. So in this case, you get the stabilization of the cognate tRNA. But if something comes in there that is non-cognate, that is not matching, well now it's going to be more easily discriminated and the ribosome is then able to reject it. So if you have mismatches between the tRNA anticodon and the messenger RNA codon, well now you get these rejected. If these mismatches are in the third position, however, well now this can actually still be incorporated because this is what we call a wobble position where there's a little more flexibility allowed and you can get things like non-canonical base pairing, um, things like the base is kind of shifting a little so they can make these weaker interactions that aren't those normal like G to C, A to um, U interactions but can still kind of hold things in place a little bit and not be rejected. So in both of those cases where you have the third position differ, but the first two are the same, or where all three of them were not the same, but are matching or complementary, or the case where you have all three be complementary, these would both have the corresponding amino acid be added. The correct one, these would be cognate. But sometimes what can happen is that you can get things that are near cognate or non-cognate. So things that are near cognate, well, these have like one position differ, but that's not the third position typically. 
Instead, it's either the first position or the second position where the requirements are stricter and you don't get that, um, that flexibility that you get in that wobble position in that third position. So if you have a mismatch at the first or the second position, this is going to be a near cognate um, tRNA and the, uh, the ribosome is gonna have to be able to reject that. If you have both of those positions be different, well, now you have a totally non-cognate um, tRNA that's easier to reject because there's less favorable interactions that tRNA is basically just going to kind of bind transiently and then hop back off because there's not those stabilizing interactions. So those non-cognate tRNAs are going to be more easily um, distinguished and tossed than those near-cognate tRNAs that have like one or one mismatch at either that first or the second position. And so the ribosome is going to have to be a little more picky in order to discriminate between these near cognate and the non cognate and the cognate. So in the case of these near cognate, sometimes the ribosome can actually make mistakes and this can allow for misincorporation of amino acids. So you can get things um, like missense mutations or missense um, well, the mutation would be in the, um, the DNA, but you can get things like missense incorporation, where you have the wrong amino acid be added. And so this allows for you to kind of have substitutions happening in your protein that aren't specified by the messenger RNA itself, but the ribosomes are typically pretty accurate. So they're able to recognize when they have a cognate tRNA bound with that corresponding, that cognate amino acid. Um, so the correct one, this is all going to get added when you have those matches. So remember though that if you have a mismatch in the first or the second position, now you're going to have something that's near cognate that needs to be rejected. And in the case of both of the first two positions and, and the third potentially being non-matching, that's a totally non-cognate. That's easier to discriminate against than this near cognate. But in both of the near cognate and the non cognate, those would be kind of like different or wrong amino acids than the one that you want added, the correct one, that cognate amino acid. And so the cognate amino acid, the cognate tRNA is going to be matching or complementary, at least in those first two positions. The third position, you have this wobble position, you have a little bit more flexibility. This is going to allow you to have do things like have only um, a, a smaller number of tRNAs be able to decode a longer, a larger amount of codons. So you don't have to have 64 tRNAs in order to specify those 20 amino acids. If you have this more flexibility in that third position, well, now you're basically able to have fewer tRNAs. So for example, if you look at a codon table, basically these are going to specify which, which um, the three letter positions and what's first, second, and third. And you'll see that there are going to be multiple codons that'll specify a single amino acid. And these are going to typically have the first two um, positions be the same for a given amino acid, but then the third position you get more variability because that's that wobble position that we are talking about. And so the same tRNA will be able to recognize both of those, even though they have a different, um, a different letter at that third position because that's going to be the wobble position where now that you've kind of established things with those first two binding spots, um, you don't have to be as discriminating in that third spot. And so that would be your wobble position. So hope this helped. Um, just thought I'd do this little post because the word cognate is one of those words that's kind of just used and not really described. And then if you go to Google it, you'll see things that are totally different contexts like various um, non-biology type stuff. And so if you wanted the biology definition, there you go. It's basically just the matching, the corresponding, the correct, um, the cognate.